रहीम असलम डेयर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू आर वेरी वेल दिस लेसन इज यूनिट नंबर सेवन द टाइटल इज द मैजिक पेंट ब्रश द बुक इज ऑक्सफर्ड प्रोग्रेसिव इंग्लिश फाइव एंड द पेजेस वी आर गोइंग टू कवर आर पेज नंबर थर्टी फोर टू पेज नंबर थर्टी एट ओपन योर बुक्स एट पेज नंबर थर्टी फोर The concept we are going to discuss at first is reflexive pronoun. We all know that pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. But what is reflexive pronoun? Reflexive pronoun are the words that refer back to the subject of the sentence. That are the pronouns that refer back to subject. For example, myself, himself, herself. I am talking about myself. This pronoun myself refers back to me. That's why it is called reflexive pronoun. All the reflexive pronouns end at either self or selves if they are plural. At page number 34 of your book there is a dialogue between Sandra and Dan. Read the dialogue between Sandra and Dan at page number thirty-four and find the reflexive pronouns there. I have done some for you. The first sentence: Sandra was making herself a sandwich. In this sentence, herself refers back to Sandra, so this herself is a reflexive pronoun. Dan came in and poured some, poured himself a glass of water. Himself refers back to Dan. It's a reflexive pronoun. No thanks. I can do it myself. Myself refers back to I. It is a reflexive pronoun. And you can make one yourself. Yourself refers back to you. That's why it is a reflexive pronoun. Find more examples of reflexive pronoun in the dialogue between Sandra and Dan. Now, come to exercise number two. at page number 34 read the study corner there are four types of reflexive pronouns that are type a b c and d that are in study corner of your book sentence number a she cut herself by accident in this sentence herself just refers to the person to the same person about whom we are talking in sentence b she cooked herself a meal this type of sentence she cooked herself a meal shows that herself cooked herself shows that she is doing something for herself and sentence c she did it herself tells that nobody else did it but she did it and sentence d she made the dress by herself so this tells that by herself tells that she made the dress all alone without any help so these are four categories of reflexive pronoun they refer to the same person or they just tell that somebody has done something for himself or somebody has done something all alone so these are four categories of reflexive pronoun now come to exercise 3 In exercise three, we are given some verbs that are buy, cook, give, make, pour, teach, and write. We have to use them in sentences, and we have to make these sentences make these sentences like sentence number two, category B. She cooked herself a meal. Following the same pattern, we have to use these words into sentences. I have done some for you and you are left to make let us discuss these sentences i she bought herself a dress we use the past form of buy bought and we use the reflexive pronoun bought herself cook she cooked herself a meal give i gave myself a treat make he made himself a sandwich We have used the past form of verbs in these sentences and we have used reflexive pronoun just after the main verb and this is category B of reflexive pronoun. Teach and write are left for you. 
make sentences of teach and write yourself and copy these sentences in your notebook the next concept we are going to discuss is phrasal verbs first we will discuss what are phrasal verbs as the name shows phrasal it is a phrase verbs that act like a verb phrasal verb is a kind of phrase that is made up of a main verb and that is followed by a preposition for example come upon go for ask after so in these three words come upon go for ask after come is main verb go is main verb ask is main verb these three show action and upon for after these are prepositions so phrasal verb is basically a combination of a verb and a preposition two words come and upon function like one unit function like one word and the meanings of phrasal verb are just different from the words that are used in the phrasal verb for example come upon does not mean coming on something or go for does not mean going for something these words act like a unit like we cannot separate them how they act like a unit and how we cannot separate them just look at below examples she asked after her friend's mother asked after ask after as we have discussed above this is a phrasal verb we will use both ask and after together in the sentence so this will be a correct sentence the second she asked her friend's mother after asked and act after are separated so this is incorrect sentence this is not the correct way of using phrasal verb but there are also some exceptions we will not discuss those exceptions here just remember that they are a unit phrasal verb both verb and preposition we cannot separate them and they are a unit in exercise 1 at page number 34 we are given sentences that contain these phrasal verbs and we are asked to match these sentences to the pictures that is a very easy job you can easily understand which picture is related to which sentence but first we will discuss the meanings of the phrasal verbs used in those sentences one phrasal verb is keep off keep off does not mean keeping something switched off or keeping something closed but it means not go on something like we say keep off the path do not go on the path instead use some other way head for is used to move towards a place when we are aiming to move toward a place that is we are going to head for take after it does not mean taking something after something but it means to look like an elder member of your family like you took after your father or mother you look like them taking after come upon it means to discover something by chance go for me to attack somebody and get through get through is very interesting it means to live through a difficult period successfully it means you have spent the difficult time very successfully and now you are at good position or now you are at ease ask after to ask for news of somebody when we ask after somebody we want to learn about the news about them look into to study or investigate something look into the police looks into the matter it means police is investigating the situation investigating the case the speed boat is heading for the beach the example that is written in your book the speed boat is going to the beach is going toward the beach is moving toward the beach during our trip we came upon a deserted village came upon me we came there by chance we discovered the deserted village by chance they had little food but they got through the winter 
they didn't have enough food but they survived the police are looking into the case cause of the accident they are investigating the cause of this in accident come to exercise 2 at page number 35 it says insert phrasal verbs in the past tense we are given phrasal verbs ask after keep off look into go for take after get through come upon and head for and we have learned their meanings as well but the new thing we have to do is we have to turn them into past tense first and then we have to put them on the right sentence for example ask after when we are going to put ask after in the sentence we will use its past tense grandma asked after my friend robert we will turn ask after into past tense asked after and then we will use it in the sentence robert take after his father will be robert took after his father he dash all his exams with excellent marks he got through he succeeded in all his exams he looked into the possibility of a job at a hospital he looked into means he studied for he investigated for the possibility of a job in the hospital the gardener was cutting the football pitch so the boys kept off the grass they used the other way they didn't go on to, go on to the football pitch four of the boys went for a walk and headed for the sea they moved toward the sea for the walk they walked out of the town and came upon an old farm house they walked out of the town and they discovered an old farm house as they got closer two dogs ran out and what find the most suitable phrasal verb for it use the past tense of the phrasal verb fill this exercise in your book as well now come to exercise 3 at page number 35 we are given the some verbs we have to choose these verbs into we have to change these verbs into past tense and we have to use that past tense into the sentence we have to make sentences with the past tense of these verbs to find the past tense of these verbs we have to go to page number 120 where the past form of the verbs or past tense of the verb is given and then find there the past tense of each verb and use each verb into your sentence i have done eight for you and rest of 12 are left for you like choose this is a verb in present tense the past of the verb choose is chose c h o s e then we will use the past tense into sentence he chose a red cup dig past is dug she dug a hole and planted a tree draw the past tense is drew i drew a picture of a bird drink the past tense is drank they drank milk make very short sentences like i have made and copy these sentences in your notebook drive drove i drove a new car lose lost he lost his book eat ate he ate an apple fly flew the bird flew away the past tense of each verb shows that the action happened in the past so do this if you find any difficulty please contact me we will move to our next lesson number 3 that is reading the magic paint brush the title the magic paint brush suggests that this is story about a paint brush who is magical we will first discuss the difficult words and their meanings that i have found in the reading section the words are gleam gleam means shine luxury the goods that are enjoyable and costly but they are not necessary mural it is a large picture that is painted on the wall painted directly on the wall precious something expensive or valuable 
remark to say something about someone someone to order a person to come to a place to call somebody to some place talent natural skill or ability possession things you own so what happens in the story there's a boy whose name is samba who is a very good painter he started painting when he was just 3 years old and with the passage of time he became a very good painter he started painting objects like birds animals and other things but he was not satisfied with his paintings he wanted his paintings to look real one day when he was uh, sleeping in his bed an old man appeared and he gave samba a magic paint brush and when samba painted some things with the brush they become real he painted a sparrow it flew out he painted lamp for his rooms and things for his family and also for the poor after that the town's headman heard about his talent and he called for samba and asked him to make things of luxury for him but samba refused the town man got very angry so he asked his men to arrest samba to punish him after that what happens in the story to know that read the text of the whole story the story is very interesting you will enjoy it now have you done the reading if yes now answer these questions the questions you are going to answer are for exercise number 3 that you will find at page number 112 question number 1 is how old do you think samba was when he started painting the answer is maybe when he was 3 years old as it is suggested in the story number 2 in the opinion of towns people how good a painter was samba they thought he was very good Question number three: How did Samba feel when he saw the old man in his room? Find its answer from the reading. It is very clearly written there. Question number four: How did the bird which Samba painted with the magic paintbrush look? It looked like a real bird. Question number five. What did Samba want to discover when he painted a spider? He wanted to discover whether he was dreaming or not. Six. What kind of things did Samba paint for his family and others? The answer is very obvious from the reading. Question number seven. Why do you think the headman got angry when Samba refused to paint? because he wanted to get luxury things so he was angry find the answers from the reading section and also copy them in your notebook come to exercise number 4 at page number 37 which says complete the sentences with words or phrases from the text this exercise basically contains the meanings for the words we have read in the reading section in the story we will find the suitable words for them and for our ease the first letter of each word is given in the exercise open your books set page number 37 look at exercise number 4 sentence number 1 on a sunny day a tree is positioned between the sun and its own shadow we are given the letter s and we have to find the suitable for word the sentence sunny day a tree comes between sun and its shadow if one side is the sun the other side would be the shadow when you say something about a subject when we say something about someone we remark on it remark we have discussed in word meanings remark if you can do many things well you have many talents talents ability of doing many things a painting that is painted on a wall is a the word starts with m find the word in the reading the water on the lake shone and dash in the sunlight 
the other word for shining we have discussed it in the word meaning as well things you own are called the word is also discussed in word meaning section that starts with p and ends at s a group of birds is called a flock when we put tiles on the roof a tiled roof is covered in reddish squares of cooked clay we have read the word tile in our story if you order people to come to you we call them you summon them the word start with s a diamond is a dash stone precious stone a thing that is more expensive and beautiful than you need is a luxury the exercise is also solved in this video copy this in your books and also learn it then we will move to our next concept that is of conjunctions conjunctions are the joining words that are before after as soon as until and many more but we will discuss these four in this video these are given at page number 38 exercise number 2 we are given some activities like watch tv have supper do homework read book go to bed watch a dvd play computer games and we have to make sentences that have two clauses and we are going to join these two clauses with these conjunction like i watched tv before i had my supper I did my homework before I had my supper. I went to bed as soon as I finished my book. Until and as soon as as used in the sentences the both clauses of the sentence. I watched TV, we had supper. Both are the actions that happened in the past. I went to bed as soon as I finished my book. both actions happened in the recent past but in some sentences we discussed two actions one of them we had done earlier and other we done after that so when we use the conjunction after it suggests that one action we have done firstly and other action we had done after that and the action we have done first in the past we will use the past participle plus had had done for it after i had done my homework we had already discussed this concept i had done my homework then i practiced the music and the action we done later we will use simple past tense for it so practice these sentences using conjunctions before after as soon as and until this was all from today's lesson if you find anything difficult please do not hesitate to contact take away good care of yourself allah hafiz